Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and today we're getting going with the first episode of a brand new random card challenge in Pokemon Platinum. If this is your first experience of this series, then here's a quick rundown on how it works. For every major battle, we draw enough cards to face off against our opponent with the same number of Pokemon. We match levels exactly and take them on in a battle where items aren't allowed, held, or otherwise. We also use a set battle style so we don't get any free switches and, if possible, try to use every member of our team in battle. So far we've gone through Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn, so if you want to check those series out I'll link them in the description. Alright, let's get into the challenge. Our first necessary drawing is to determine which starter Barry will be using on his journey. We're just going to use energy cards to figure out which type starter he'll be selecting. Alright, it looks like Barry's going to be journeying through Sinnoh with Piplup at his side. Now, like the last series, we'll be splitting the cards into three stacks. To avoid having ridiculously powerful Pokemon right away, we'll be starting off with just the cards for anything with a base stat total of 350 or less. That's what you're looking at right now. After earning our first gym badge, we'll be mixing in all of those who fall between 351 and 450. Finally, prior to facing off against Fantina, we'll be adding the rest of the cards. Everything and anything with a base stat total of 451 or higher. For right now though, we're just working with the weaker Pokemon, so let's draw something to take on Barry. Against Piplup, we're going to be using Ninkata. Okay, so to ensure Barry picks the water starter, we have to replace Chimchar with Ninkata using the Universal Pokemon Randomizer. Sadly, the first battle happens prior to being able to nickname your starter, so I'm nicknaming it after and you're just going to have to pretend it's there. This is Weevil the Ninkata. We're also not going to be able to look at our starter's moveset before the battle, so I'll just tell you now that Ninkata starts with Scratch, Harden, and Leech Life. Alright, let's get into it. Standing in the middle of Route 201, we throw out Pokeballs releasing Ninkata and Piplup and get the battle underway. Barry instructs his starter to use Growl, but just before he lets out a high-pitched whine, Ninkata scuttles in close to scratch the Penguin Pokemon. Barry steps in to complain, but we both call for the same move, meaning Weevil deals a little more damage with his lowered attack. We've got a rhythm going and Barry's really enjoying Piplup's Growl, so we run that turn back yet again. After another two attempts at defining insanity, Barry decides that this is when he's going to kick it up a notch. So, we go for another Scratch Growl turn because it's worked so far. Once Ninkata's attack stat has been completely bottomed out, Barry calls for Pound, which Piplup lands after the bug's seventh Scratch. Now that we've lost some hit points, we go for a Leech Life to try to heal up a bit while attacking. We go back and forth with Leech Life and Pound until both Pokemon are left with just a couple of hit points. Weevil's Leech Life only drains a single hit point though, moving himself up to 3 HP, but it's not enough. Pound is dealing exactly that much damage, so one final thwack knocks out Ninkata to hand us a loss in the first battle of the game. Well, that didn't go to plan, but you actually don't need to win this to keep going, so we can continue on after our loss. That is the only time we'll be able to do that, though. After finishing up in Little Root Town, we head through Sanjem Town down Route 202 to Jubilife City. There is not much to do there, but after leaving onto Route 203, we've got another rival battle with Barry in front of us. We're going to need a team of two for our second face-off, and it looks like we'll be using Bellsprout and Pikachu. As Barry is going to be using Starly and Piplup, this may well be the most ideal team we've ever drawn in a random car challenge. Let's have a look at the movesets. Up first, we've got Pomona the Bellsprout, who's on par with Starly at level 7. Her moveset's made up of Vine Whip and Growth, which should be more than enough for this one. We've also got DeVito the Pikachu, who's a couple of levels higher at 9, and he's equipped with Thundershock, Growl, and Tail Whip. Alright, I really don't see any way for us to lose this battle, so let's get into it. Barry sends out his brand new Starly to begin, and we start off with Pikachu. The normal flying type flaps slowly above the battlefield as we call for Thundershock. The jolt of electricity rockets through the air, connecting with Starly, knocking him out before he hits the ground. After Barry sends in Piplup, we recall DeVito, who's right on the verge of a botch toe, and send out Pomona. We know Barry's old strategy and it definitely has not changed. Piplup growls at Bellsprout on entry before she can counter with Vine Whip. Piplup's second growl is followed by another whip crack and it's really starting to feel like Barry was okay with just one win. Another growl lowers Pomona's attack further as a third Vine Whip leaves Piplup in red health. Barry now needs to take down both members of our team with a single red health Pokemon so of course goes for growl. That is just strategically flawless. Bellsprout finishes the battle with one final Vine Whip, so after a loss in rival battle number one, we've thoroughly embarrassed Barry to make up for it. After continuing down Route 203 and through Orberg Gate, we make it to Orberg City, ready for our first gym battle. Rourke has a team of three, so that's how many cards we'll need to draw. We're going to be using the trio of Dojuo, Voltorb, and Goldeen. That is probably going to make things tough. 
The Orberg Gym Leader uses a team of Rock types, which seems perfect for Goldeen, but there's no way for us to get a Water type move at this level. Let's have a look at what we will have on hand. Wrath the Dojo was up first at level 12, and his moveset's made up of Peck, Growl, Quick Attack, and Rage. Not the most useful moveset against a team of Rock types, so let's see if the others can make up for it. Asphera the Voltorb's up next, also at level 12, and it's got the moves Spark, Charge, Tackle, and Sonic Boom. That final move is an amazing option to have early on as it deals 20 hit points of damage against any non-ghost types. Finally we have Aroto the Goldeen who's our highest level Pokemon at 14 and he has Peck, Tail Whip, Supersonic and Water Spore. Yeah this one's definitely going to be difficult, let's give it a go. Rourke sends out his Geodude first and we lead off with Dojuo so not a great matchup. Raph charges headlong into the floating rock probably hurting his two heads more than Geodude's one. As Doju is dashed onto Rourke's half of the field, the gym leader takes the opportunity to call for Stealth Rock, covering our side with Jagged Stones. Without any great alternative, Raph is forced to go for Rage once again, barely managing to budge Geodude. This time he counters by tossing a rock right at the nearby bird, badly injuring him. This does at least anger Dojuo enough to power up his final hit, but that'll be his last action. Another rock throw crushes Raph, taking us down to two. We send in Voltorb next, who's damaged by the Stealth Rocks on entry. The living, breathing Pokeball then exercises its right to annoy me massively by sending a 90% accuracy move wide of the mark. Geodude's Rock Throw connects with Sveta, who's now angry enough to land Sonic Boom. This whole team runs on anger. It falls just short of taking down the Legless Rock, who chucks another stone into Voltorb. Rourke then sprays a potion on Geodude, which is immediately and precisely cancelled out by Sonic Boom before Sveta uses its speed once again. The sound wave is cut through the air, hitting Geodude to score the knockout and level up the match. Rourke sends out his Onyx next, who also experiences the pain of Sonic Boom before countering with a rock throw of his own. Espera lives through the hit and red health, connecting once more to take us into the lead. Rourke says Cranidos is next in line, and as we're no longer dealing with partial ground types, we call for Spark. The electrical blast knocks the head butt Pokemon off his feet, but he recovers quickly to attack with Pursuit. That's the end of Voltorb, so now we're down to just Goldeen. The sharp stones slice into Oroto, who's stuck flopping around on the battlefield. I guess Rourke didn't account for water types. As Kratos has a massive attack stat, I figured our best strategy was to confuse him and hope he does our job for us. The Orbre Gym Leader uses another potion to heal up the rock type, and after we lower his defense with Tail Whip, he breaks through to land a headbutt. We lower Kratos' defense more, but yet again he ignores the confusion. We continue with this strategy because with a massive attack stat and a compromised defense, one hit may be enough. Unfortunately, headbutt hits its mark once again. One final Tail Whip lowers Cranidos' defense, but somehow he breaks through for a fourth time to connect with Headbutt and earn Rourke the win. So we don't really have the option to level up or update our movesets here, so let's just go back and try again. There's only a 6.25% chance of breaking through Confusion four times in a row, so a bit more luck may help us through. We start things out exactly the same by sending in Dojuo and calling for Rage. This time around, Rourke doesn't start with a Stealth Rock though. That may help out in the long run, but short term it means Raph is getting pelted by rocks right off the bat. Which in turn means we can only attack twice before going down to Geodude's rock throw. I still think this may have been a slightly better start as we've avoided the Jagged Stones. Voltorb enters the battle unimpeded and on this attempt decides to land his first Sonic Boom. It's now that Rourke calls for Stealth Rock before using a potion that's once again made moot by Sonic Boom. Espera has a chance to finish off the Orberg Gym Leader's first Pokemon, but fires wide. So, Geodude's able to hurl one last rock before Voltorb knocks him out. When Onyx comes in, we literally just reenact the first battle exactly. Beat for beat, Sonic Boom number 1 is followed by a rock throw that deals exactly 6 hit points of damage, after which Voltorb takes down Onyx with the second Sonic Boom. We're in a slightly stronger position than last time as Cranidos enters the battle, so let's see if it makes a difference. As far as Spark leaves the pure rock type below half health before he counters with Headbutt, leaving the ball incredibly weak. The contact paralyzes Cranidos though, so we have a chance to finish things right away with Voltorb. As I mentioned earlier though, part of the challenge is making use of the whole team, so we recall Asphera to send out a Roto. Goldeen comes in as Rourke uses his second potion to heal his ace back up. I still think the original strategy is the way to go, so start by calling for Supersonic. On this occasion, it pays dividends right away. Cranidos barrels into the wall in his state of confusion, injuring himself. We continue going with the plan, calling for Tail Whip to lower his defense, and another bout of confusion leaves him in red health. Even though we could call for a not very effective attack that may be enough, Goldeen uses Tail Whip once more. In a complete and total reversal of our first attempt, Kranidos hits himself with confusion on every single try, knocking himself out to earn us our first gym batch. That really was the polar opposite of our first run. Having added the coal badge to our case, our next major battle will be against Mars at Valley Windworks. 
Before getting into that, we'll be adding the middle tier of cards, all of those with base stat totals between 351 and 450. We'll get to that in episode 2 though. For now, we've sort of made it past Barry, kind of, and picked up our first gym badge, so that's a pretty solid start. This series takes quite a long time to set up, but I really enjoy making it, so if you've stuck around till now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.